on guys so we get we're here at church getting ready to drop the babies off y'all ready to go to your class y'all ready to go and learn about god all right y'all gonna be We just wanted to come on here and share with you just a couple things that we learned this week and just let you guys know that this is something that we're starting. Every Sunday, we're going to try to come on here and just speak life and not death. We firm believers that when you speak life, you can watch it grow. Yes. So we want to speak life into you guys, watch your situations change, watch the problems, issues in your life get better, even ours, you know, so, you know, when you see these videos, if you guys have prayer requests, if you guys have issues and stuff like that that you guys want to pray for, go ahead and drop it in our comment section. And I guarantee you every Sunday before we go to bed, we're going to read every last one of those. We're going to pray about those situations and we're going to watch God work in your life. If you read our bio, you'll know that we're a faith-based family. Uh, with that being said, that don't mean we go to church every Sunday. We've been taught that we, we are, are the, the church. church, you know, so... We practice our faith by the way that we live, uh, our the generosity, generosity, exactly, and you know, just, just being kind to others and speaking positivity and just not being of this world because in this world it can be very easy to follow culture and follow the way that everyone else is doing, but that's not the way of God. So we want to just encourage you guys all to just live in the way of God and to. I wanted to specifically come on here and piggyback on something that I've learned last Sunday. It was about guarding your heart. We're going to have a whole separate video on guarding your heart, but I want to just briefly talk about it so you can know a little bit about what that even means. What that means to me is guarding your heart, especially in this generation, in this world that we live in, that is about a lot of a lot of it's about social media and looking for justification and all yeah looking for, looking for your worth and justification through likes comments views subscriptions and the reality of it is those things don't define who we are exactly not at all and i've had to learn that on my own as well especially with looking at youtube for instance i got into youtube by looking at other youtube moms I watch a lot of mommy videos and day in the life routines and what they eat in a day and all those cool little videos, which I still love to watch. But when I was watching them, I was looking at the flaws in myself. Like, what am I doing wrong as a mom? What can I be feeding my children that's healthier and things of that sort. But the reality of it is I'm not them and it's not good to it's not good to compare yourself. God and, defines your worth. Yes, God defines my worth, not likes, not comments, not what anybody else is doing. And it's just very important to guard your heart because it's very easy to get discouraged and to find yourself getting down when you're looking at other stuff that other well, people are doing. Basically. Well, the devil have your heart. He put a blind over your eyes. When he has your heart, he has your mind. So, you know, he could get into your ear and it, it, it's he becomes a distraction. Uh, even in my life, like just last week, I went through this entire thing because if you know anything about me, um, you know, I grew up in the church uh, my entire life. My grandmother, uh, my grandfather, I spoke about him last time. But let me tell you just a little bit about my grandmother, uh, Miss Vera Sims. She kept me in the church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, just you name it. I was on a usher board. I was a junior deacon. I helped in the choir if needed. I told you guys I used to cut the church grass every Saturday. So, you know, I'm well-rounded and well-versed in the Bible. But that's where the devil step in. When I was coming up in church, they always tell you to rebuke the name of the devil. But no one told you how much power the devil has. And that's the importance of guarding your heart. Because if you don't guard your heart, like I said, he'll put that blind over your eyes. For me, what that looked like was he used the Bible against me. He took the scripture that I know so well that I've had rep 
repetitiously in my ear since I was a child and made me doubt the small things as well as the important things like who Jesus is in my life. And all praise be to God because, you know, the Lord showed me his power, his might, and, and, sh and my wife was the one who reminded me to keep your heart guarded so things like that doesn't happen. As well as, I charge you husbands too, it's your job to kind of help keep guard over your wife's heart so that way you don't speak death. We, we believe that we speak life and we watch it grow. So with that being said, speaking life, also, guys, when you uplift and when you speak positive things, you can see it happen. So, like I said, when you guys have issues or if you guys have things you need to pray prayed over, we're going to watch it grow. We're going to change and rebuke the devil with you. Because the Bible says two or more are gathered in my name. He will be present. So we got us two plus all, all of you. So the Lord is present. Now, we're going to go into a little bit about what we learned today. Today, we learned about Daniel, Dan, the first one through four, Daniel one through four. We've been in a series. Uh, our series has been coming from the book of Daniel. Yes. What we learned about today was when prophets speak. Mm -hmm. How ironic, right? When prophets speak. And Pastor Mike did an amazing job. If you guys don't know who Pastor Mike is, in a link uh, in our description, we're going to put the church that we attend, how you guys could go back and see the sermons. Uh, a, a way to just connect uh, and get your needs met. Uh, your needs it, met. Yeah. Your needs met using this platform. But he spoke about when prophets speak, and he did an amazing job wrapping up this sermon today. Uh, the first thing that he did was he clarified the language. You know, when you speak of prophets or the connotation attached to a prophet, you think of this holy man or this yes. this, this this perfect guy. With perfect a... guy or Someone that's like just holier than thou. And the reality of it is that we all are prophets. Amen. And we can, if we speak the will of God and the way of God to God's people who are all of you all. We prophesy. We are prophet. We're prophesizing. So we know different from you. You know, you guys know us. A lot of you guys know us on a personal level. And you know, we've done the same things you guys done, if not more. Now we're not coming on here to speak negatively. We're not pastors or anything like that, but we, we are prophets. We're here. If we do know... If we we wouldn't be it wouldn't be right if we don't tell you guys what we've learned as well and hold all the knowledge in to ourselves. So it's good to speak life. Yes, you know. And if you know a little bit backdrop of our story, we're so young. People always ask us how our marriage work, how we succeed, how we do all the things that we do, and they think it's impossible. Sometimes we doubt ourselves. Like yes. How are we going to make ends meet next month? Or how are we going to do this? Or how are we going to do that? But we, we, we've we been taught to order our life by putting God first. Yep, God, each other, spouse. our kids, work, and then hobbies. Exactly, so, in that order. In that order. And we wouldn't be anything without God. Anything. We we pray every night. We, we're not perfect, like you just said. But we just, God is the head of our life. And we that. we have learned to just trust him wholeheartedly. Now, in whatever religious background that may be, just trust in God because his will is going to prevail over anything. And once you accept that to your heart, that God's will will be done in your life and believe in him. First of all, you got to accept him, but believe in him, his will will be done. But back to the topic, um, he, he, Pastor Mike did an amazing job breaking down uh, what a prophet is. And he said a prophet is one who speaks God's word, God's will, God's way. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. And also, um, he showed us in Corinthians, the 14th chapter, the verse 3, which I read. It says, But he that profiteth speak unto men the edification and extortion and comfort. Now, the way, the way I was brought up, Sometimes, you know, we hear those big words and we don't know what they mean. So if you don't know what those last three words mean, I don't even think I said the second right. Edification. Exhortation. Is, exhortation and comfort. Edification is the instruction or improvement of a person morally or intellectually. Extort, exhortation is an address or communication emphatically encouraging or urging someone to do something and comfort is a state 
of physical ease and freedom of pain or constraint. So I'll read that again. It says, but he that profiteth speak unto men the edification and exhortation. exhortation and comfort. So he who instructs the improvement of a person. So we speak life even in the word. The speaking life. Don't be down on somebody. Pastor Mike gut checked us today by saying, don't talk about somebody. Don't post can... about somebody if you're not willing to pray, pray for that for person. Them. Yes. So just speak life once again, guys. So that was him breaking down what a prophet was, okay? And then after he broke down what a prophet was, he also broke down what Babylon was. Yes. Because this this chapter today was the fourth chapter of Daniel. And uh it was we last week it was about uh King Nebuchadnezzar and he built this big old tower. I forget the exact measurements uh of and had A people gold statue. the gold the gold statue and had people worship it. And then uh now it was going into how or this week was it going into how King Nebuchadnezzar came back and had to bite his words because he saw in that furnace a fourth man after throwing Shadrach, Nisha, and Abednego in the flames. But he also saw a fourth person, and we believe that that fourth person was God. And he had to come back and bite his own words and pretty much um, proclaim that the God that they serve is the God of all gods. And there's no one that's going to save you like Shadrach, Neshat, and Abednego God did save them from that furnace. And it was even said that they came out of that furnace and didn't even smell like smoke. Yes. Isn't that something? That's amazing. So, uh, Babylon, breaking down the word Babylon. Babylon is the name of the kingdom that Daniel was involved with. And it's a place near Shinar, which is near Iraq. And Another name for Babylon would be pretty much our culture. We're going to talk about Babylon as if it's the world we live in today. And, um, yeah. Also, it was translated to us that Babylon was any part of culture that stands against God's will. Yeah. Which we live in that today. Y'all know like I know. Any part of culture that stands against God's will, it's a lot of stuff going on in the media. If you watch the news... Social media, a lot of things that they're legaliza legalizing. Yeah. Um, just the way of life is not today is going against the will of God. I told you guys, I grew up in a church house, and I remember coming up in the church. It was a place of order. Uh, the structure of the church, the way it was set up from the pulpit, uh, the mothers of the church, uh, 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 the deacons of the church, were they were they were there to lead. They were there to encourage. They were there to 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 build up and. In our life, like we told you guys, we believe that, you know, well, we were taught that we are the church. And the same way my church has structure as a child, we try to structure our lives today. So, you know, prophets going against Babylon was what we were. In prophets, that's you going against any part of culture that stand against God's will. And so after he explained that to us, he also gave us uh encouragement and he also taught us how do prophets handle life in babylon you know and the first thing he showed us was the first thing that prophets have to do is they have to take a stand yes and what that looks like is you can stand in prayer yes you got to stand apart you got to stand for the weak and the oppressed and you got to stand for god no matter what no matter what that looks like um even this this is not of the culture to come on here on YouTube and speak of God and we're doing it anyways because that's what we're called to do. It's not going to be easy guys. I'm going to tell you, you know, this is our fifth, sixth, ninth, a hundred take. Hundredth. We've, we've, been, <laughs> we've been trying to record this video over and over and over, but everything kept getting in the way, but we're like, you know what? We're going to do this. The devil's used just about everything he could to kind of distract us. People cutting the grass in the background. Dogs kids barking, kids crying. crying. Uh, I mean, just everything he could to try to stop this from happening. But I rebuke the devil. I, <laughs> I rebuke, rebuke him. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, uh, we don't want to uh, drag this out, but we just want you guys to know, like, you know, what that looks like. What it looks like to stand for God. And even if it's something as small as this, you know. And a lot of people know... Uh, a lot of the things that we're involved with. But one thing I wanted to say is I wanted to 
charge you guys as well. I charge you guys to stand for something, you know, because if you don't stand for something, you'll, you'll fall, fall for, for anything, anything, you know. Yeah. So stand for God no matter what, no matter what that look like, you know. Um, just be about your father's business. You know, that's not easy. That's not easy. Stand apart, okay? You know, just because so-and-so is doing it or so-and-so not going to agree or so-and-so gave you a thumbs down or so-and-so commented and said, well, I remember last week you did this, that, and the third. We're not perfect. Not at all. Nah, but in Christ we are. So, you know, just stand for something, okay? The next thing you got to do is change your focus, right? Definitely. Change the way others view you. You know, by taking a stand, especially standing for God, he's going to allow you to change your focus, okay? He's going he's gonna to change the way you look at things. One thing I'm big on is taking negative. When people say negative stuff about you. Flip it into a positive. Flip it into a positive. Like you guys see on my Instagram and Facebook, I've been working out. Yeah. And y'all know I got some chicken legs. Y'all know I got the smallest legs in the world. And my wife, she's like... When, when I got ready to start posting my workout videos and seeing them little bitty legs, she's like, you know they're going to say this. But she'll tell you, every week when I go in there to do leg day, the very first hard. thing the very first thing I do is I look at them comments. And I use that as fuel. So when I feed it, leg day is my favorite day. I still don't have big legs. I still got chicken legs. But I <laughs> it's haven't okay. given up. It's okay. Don't give up. You'll get them. Exactly. Big legs. 2019. All 2019. <laughs> but, you know, just change your focus, guys, you know. Um, and like I said, just look forward to us coming on here every week and just sharing something with you. Even if it's as short as just we love you, God love you, and have a good day. Or just if it's something as short as us reading the comments that you guys put in our last video and just praying over those situations. And don't worry, we're not going to say what your situation was or who you are or who said what we don't care about that stuff we just want to speak life and watch the change happen we want to yeah. watch you guys grow with us okay so we love you we love you god love you and we hope you have a beautiful day also read your word do, do what, what it, it says, says. peace I believe.